This is the Scoop for Friday. I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines. Amid a rise in anti-Semitism and the war between Israel and Hamas, Florida lawmakers plan to steer $25 million to Jewish day schools and preschools and another $10 million to nonprofit organizations to help bolster security. Identical proposals filed yesterday in the House and Senate for a special legislative session that will start Monday would establish $10 million in grants for nonprofits, including houses of worship, schools, museums, and community centers that are at high risk for violent attacks or hate crimes. The $10 million would be distributed by the State Division of Emergency Management through the Nonprofit Security Grant Program, which mirrors a federal grant program designed to protect communities against extremist attacks. The endangered Florida panther is our state's official animal and one of the most endangered mammals in the country. WMNF's Chris Young reports on a surprising statistic that may be indicating the panther's decline. Only eight Florida panther deaths have been recorded this year, according to Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission record. They've all been from vehicle collisions. And for Elise Bennett, Florida and Caribbean director and senior attorney for the Center for Biological Diversity, that's troubling. The reason that seeing this lower number is a concern to us is because it suggests perhaps that the, pa- the panther population is smaller. And so fewer panthers are being hit because there are simply fewer to be crossing roads. What may be causing this decrease? There are many possible reasons, including habitat loss from development, as well as a fairly new disease. It's called feline leukomyelopathy, or FLM. And um, officials have seen this both in bobcats as well as in Florida panthers. It's this neuromuscular disease that really inhibits permanently panthers' ability to move. So often these panthers appear to be wobbly. They stumble when they walk. Uh, And to date, we really don't know a whole lot about FLM. Bennett is calling on federal officials to do more for the panther. We've really urged the wildlife agencies to do a a more in-depth assessment of what the panther population looks like right now. She encourages the public to report wildcats that may have a wobbly walk to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission and write their representatives to do more to protect the panthers. For WMNF News, I'm Chris Young. Four former U.S. Attorneys General filed a brief yesterday at the Florida Supreme Court backing Governor Ron DeSantis' decision to suspend Orlando area state attorney Monique Wuerl. The friend of the court brief filed by former Attorney General Edwin Meese, former Attorney General Michael Mukasey, Jeff Sessions, and former Attorney General William Barr accused Wuerl of prosecutorial abdication of duties and not enforcing entire categories of law that did not comport with her policy preferences. DeSantis on August 9th issued an executive order suspending Wuerl, a Democrat who was elected in 2020 in the 9th Judicial Court, which is made up of Orange and Osceola counties. The Tampa Bay Times reports Tampa's police force is set to expand with 30 new officers thanks to a pair of grants totaling almost $4 million given out yesterday by the U.S. Department of Justice. The Tampa Police Department will receive more than $3.7 million dollars from the feds for hiring new officers, according to senior officials within the Federal Justice Department. Another $160,000 will be allocated for de-escalation training to prevent the unnecessary use of force within the police department. And the Tampa Bay Times reports a day after a Tampa City Council member suggested shuttering businesses early in response to the weekend shooting in Ybor City, residents and business owners flocked to Old City Hall decrying the proposal as a blow to the historic district and entertainment hub. For the weather, it's cool and cloudy in the Tampa Bay area. Highs today in the low 80s, overnight lows in the low 60s. Tomorrow will be cloudy with highs in the lower 80s. I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines on 88.5 FM and the WMNF app. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa.